Good morning. Uh, wait, let me see. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but can you hear me? I can hear you and I can see you, but I don't. For some reason, my camera is not working. I have your your. Oh, Pamela, your camera yeah, is not working. Yeah. Oh, oh there you are. Yeah, this is, this, I, I have- Thank you, with, Jen. Yes, exactly. I'm like, <laughs> why is my camera not on? I'm, I love I, it when other people do that because I'm always messing these things up. No, I, I am like way too much on my plate. <laughs> You're way, right. You way okay? too much. Are you okay, Pamela? Oh, yeah. It's just, you know. Too yeah. much, too many things going on. I will be like, okay, on uh, on April 8th, Paul announced the new Quest Directorate. I know, yeah, I read the, yeah, she sounds incredible. Yeah. So. yeah. Thank you for okay. the extra work you've been doing and Jennifer too. I just, thank you. So I'm just, yeah, I'm just tired. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? What's wrong with my camera? I'm like, oh. <laughs> well, I usually do stuff like that, and I don't have the excuse of being tired necessarily. Just open. <laughs> I was 78 yesterday. Oh, congratulations! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you have to come and have I have a cup of tea with me. Oh, I would love it. I would love yeah, it. Yeah. So you want to make a date? Actual? I can get my calendar. Oh yeah. Okay. I will. Do we have time. We do. We're waiting for other folks. I mean, just make sure that they're not in um, the attendees. And Marty, I'm hoping that you're doing well. Yeah, I am actually. Good. Notice everything's empty behind me. I know. Wow. That makes me sad because it means that you're you're leaving, which I hate. Yeah. <laughs> well. yeah, I close on my condo on Monday and the move right now is set for the 22nd of April. You're wow. moving closer to kids and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It makes sense, but I, I'm going to really, it's going to be a big loss. It is going to be oh, huge. Thank you. But yeah, it's really good. I My condo is three blocks from my daughter's house. Oh, oh wow that's yeah. great yeah and it's melrose if you don't know anything about it it's a truly walkable city oh yeah. wow yeah so my condo's right around the corner from a whole foods a cbs uh -huh. and i'm six blocks from the center of town oh that's oh. perfect that's it yeah it's it's it really it's considered one of the most walkable cities in america wow i just so, got really lucky that i found a nice condo wow yeah really so, so really. pat what does um, tomorrow look like for you? Tomorrow is Wednesday. Yeah. Um, I could meet you for coffee in the morning. Okay. I have what? to be in East Hampton at one forty-five, which means leaving around one-ish. Okay. So, would you like to meet at 11? Yeah, that would be great. Right. 11 o'clock. Where shall we have coffee? Um, well, I the I'm always at the Amherst Coffee, but I will I'm willing to go any place that you will. Oh, like. that's fine. That's okay. Fine. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that will be great. Yeah, we lost Myra. Yes. I don't, I I don't know, and there's no one. She in was attendees. here and then disappeared. Um, I did hear from Saren that she was not going to be able. No, no, not Saren. I did hear from Elise that she was not going to be able to join us, but I haven't heard from anyone else. There is a fourth person. Let me see. In the attendees, it's Saren. Let me bring her over. taken a little bit okay she's gonna be and i will see if i can see any um 
I'm going from one um, meeting to the next today. So I'll check in my email to see if anybody has emailed me that they were. Hey, there she is. Hey, Sarah. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning. I don't see any emails from anyone else. Okay, so I'm not sure where everyone else is. You know, Pamela, Yes. Uh, every month we get a link and I did not get it. So I just saw the meeting ID number on the agenda, and that's how I zoomed in. Right. So I wonder if. if oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So I wonder if the others are having the same struggle I had this morning. Right. So I emailed you yesterday because I noticed that something bounced back from your account to make sure to see if you had gotten um, materials. But um, the Marty and Pat, did you all receive emails with the invites? Uh, yeah, and I, I actually did. went off of yours this morning. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not sure. I don't see any additional emails from anyone else. And um, Saren, yours was the, um, I noticed yesterday when I double checked, yours had oh. bounced back. Oh, there's Myra. There's Myra. I don't know if I'm. We hear you. Hi, Myra. You do hear me. Yes, yes. we do. Yet another Zoom disaster. Everything mm -hmm. was fine until I heard you come on before. Oh, wait, no, it's in my earphones now. I'm just going to leave it. Do you hear me now? Yes. Yes. And I hear you and I quit. I'm not playing games with this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I give up. Okay. All right. Do we have a quorum? We do not. There are three of us. Oh, we yeah, have. Yes, you do. There are three, right? How we many need, people on the committee? We need four. Oh, we need sorry. one more. Yeah. I know that Elise is not going to be able to join, but I did not hear from um, James, Ian, or Cody. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe they'll show up. Maybe they have Zoom issues just like me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I showed up without my camera on and was panicking because I didn't know what I had done wrong. <laughs> so. And Jennifer pushed one little button, and then there she was. <laughs> Oh, that's very cool. <laughs> Good that Jennifer knows what to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jennifer for come people to like Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer, come to my house. Yeah. Um, like, well, you know what? I'm going to take a minute because actually I'm supposed to not even be in the room with you guys. I'm supposed to be in a tent and not, you know, an attendee, not a panelist. But you guys let me in. Thank you. Oh, but nice. I'm, I really want to thank you. And, um, uh, for signing on to the um, ceasefire resolution is much appreciated. Ah, so great. Good. Well, we yeah. haven't officially started yet because I haven't read all the legalese language, although no. we are recording. So. Oh, we're recording, but we don't right. even have enough people. We haven't, uh, we don't have a, uh, a quorum. Yet. Well, we can very... still meet without the quorum, but we cannot make any decisions. That's what I know. Isn't That's that what true? I think too? Yeah. Right. So we can still continue. We can't with it. make any decisions. Mm -hmm. Well, right. maybe we should just start the meeting because we actually have a lot to do. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, opening up the thing that says what we're supposed to do is going to be pretty impossible right this minute. Right. Um, so, all right. Um, so, do you want I to read can, the. Yeah, I can read the. Um, uh, the, le the legal language. All right. The Disability Access Advisory Committee is meeting virtually pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. 
This meeting is being conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, the, at, um, at present, this moment, the committee does not have a quorum, so they will just be engaging in discussion. And if at such time um, it obtains a, a quorum, it will be able to act oh, on we have oh, one. And there we go. There's Here's a quorum. Yep. yep, we have one. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Great. All right. So, so first is your roll call. Um, Myra Ross, I am here. Anybody else want to announce? Aaron, they're, they're in here. here. Marty Smith here. Ian Rodewalt here. Sorry for being late. Oh, it's perfect. You made us have perfect a quorum, time. which is perfect. Yes. All right. Perfect timing. <laughs> yes. So, um, does anyone have any announcements? Um. Uh, Myra, this is Ian. Just a yep. follow-up announcement from last month. Um, I wrote the letter that we had talked about um, yes. in of the ceasefire resolution, and we submitted it to the town council. Yep. Thank you for doing that. And I thank you also, Ian. Thank you very much for all of you for signing yes. on. And now I'll be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you for doing that, Ian. Um, thank you I actually have a it. question. Yeah. Um, so I'm moving on the 22nd of April. Oh, wow. And I will. So I'll be here for the next meeting. Am I allowed to to um, work from Melrose until you find a replacement for me? I believe you are allowed to work for Melrose as long as you continue to be a registered voter in Amherst. So when you change your voter registration to Melrose, you'll okay. no longer be a resident of Amherst. Okay. Um, but I believe until you do that, you are able to to um, to be a member of the DAAC. It would just be like you had a second home, right? So you could have a second okay. home anywhere, still be a resident of Amherst. And as soon as you change your voter registration, then you will no longer be a resident of Amherst. Am I right, Pamela? Uh, I know that residency is a requirement, and I also know that um, we have residents who have um, served on boards who have uh, second homes and who have been remote. Um, so I think it's the the deciding factor is your residency. So right. Okay. And I think you registered. You registered. My house resident. is going on the market probably in three weeks, so I'll probably still own it until possibly June at the latest. So, and uh, Jim is here and I'm promoting him to a panelist. So you're, you know. Oh, fabulous. Okay, so what, what we said last month in your absence, first of all, we're terribly sorry for your, for your, for the loss of your husband. And second of all, we're terribly sorry that you're gonna leave us because you're an incredibly important person on this committee. We couldn't do anything that we do sometimes without you, so. Oh, thank you. I will write a letter of resignation to the, um, to Brockelman, to Paul. And is it okay if I suggest that they find another architect? I think this board desperately needs an architect on it. I agree. So I will make that recommendation. I don't know whether they'll pay attention to it. It took me forever to get on this board. So do you know anyone who might want to be on? It can't be an architect who's working because there's too many conflicts, right? Potentially. Yeah. No, I don't I don't agree with that. You don't agree with that. Okay. No, if if they can't, you know, they might have to I'm sorry, I'm butting in. No, um, that's okay. They can be a working architect if something came before um, DASC that they were involved in, they would recuse themselves. They would not be able, you know, the 
participate mm. in the discussion or stuff, but I don't see we're actually being employed as an architect as in the way. Hmm. And I agree with uh, with uh, Council um, Councillor DeAngelis that I think you could have a working um, architect. And I'm I um, based on the last few years, I would say that it's likely that the opportunities are that they would recuse themselves would be you know just a few times a year, um, um, and so during the other times you would have that expertise which I think is much needed. Um, okay. And they could participate in discussions, but they could not participate in the vote so that you could still have the benefit of some of the um, information, perhaps, but recuse themselves from the vote. Yeah. Well, I could just see it with, with somebody bringing a project and there isn't anybody on the committee who's going to say, hey, you didn't do that right. That's that's my concern um, because that's something that marty brings to us and she knows the chapters and the verses and she can tell them why they didn't do it right um, and i don't think too many people are going to police themselves that way i mean we've had architects come to this board uh who thought it was perfectly okay to use granite strips on the top of steps you know i mean they don't often know what they're doing that's right. I mean, they don't always know let's put it that way yeah i agree so I, we we could never replace you, Marty, but we will try. We will you try. are sweet. Thank you. Can we um, uh, can we communicate with you, Marty, when we're in dire straits <laughs> and ask your opinion? Could you yes, do that? Yes, you can. I will be a consultant if you want. <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah, actually. Like every yeah. second Tuesday. Jim, say that again, please. No, I just said with dire straits like every second Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. If you want to be a community member consultant, if okay. you come to the meetings, that's awesome. Okay. I yeah, that would be now. great. <laughs> I feel much better now. Okay. Um, all right. So the first, um, oh, do we have any community people here? We do comment. not have anyone um, in okay. um, for the general public comment. Okay. So a couple months ago, Saren raised a very important question to which we did not really have an answer, which is, in the event of an emergency, which at the time was in the flavor of weather emergency, but it could be any kind of, you know, it, it could be summer weather emergencies. It could have to do with floods could have to do with tornado warnings. We've certainly had them. It could have to do with, um, you know, um, uh, let's say there was a, you know, an unsafe situation in her neighborhood, something like that. Uh, it could be, you know, a chemical spill. It could be anything. What is it and in what way or who knows about people who cannot necessarily evacuate themselves or who can't necessarily get out uh, on their own on the drop of a dime. So how do we, how do, is Pamela, do you have any ideas about who we, who should keep such a list of people? And obviously it would have to be a voluntary list, but um, it's a very good question. What would somebody do if they needed emergency assistance? Uh, you know, so there there is a team in the um, in the town that serves as the emergency uh, management team. I think it's spearheaded by Chief Nelson, um, and um, and he would coordinate with the you know the other branches of law enforcement. So we could, I could pose that question to him, um, but I don't know the answer directly. Okay, Sarah, you brought this up. So can yes. you enlighten us to exactly yeah. what you were thinking that yeah. might be uh, bigger than what I brought up? Yeah, I forgot the date of that snowstorm we had and it was on a weekend. And uh, I need 
assistance to get up in and out of bed. So I, and the storm got um, stronger in the afternoon. And then there was no way. I mean, I had the driveway plowed in the morning, but since then there was lots of accumulation during the daytime. And then nobody was coming, no traffic, nothing. And then I started worrying about how am I going to tell my PCA that she can come and my road is open and my driveway is plowed. So that was an issue. And I had no way of reaching anyone because it was either a Sunday or a Saturday. It was a weekend. And then I was able to get hold of Guilford's personal mobile number, cell number, and I called him in desperation. And he says, don't worry, I'll take care of it. And in about an hour, they plowed my road. And then um, my neighbor, which is snowblower, he saw me in that situation. He knows my condition and he came and snowblow my driveway. So I said, you know, if the driveway is open, if the street is not plowed, there's a, there's a little hill in my street and there's no way you could reach for help. And then that's when I said, I should bring this up to DAC. There should be a number. And because the road was not plowed since morning and you know, they have to, or at least we need to know the policy. Do they just leave it to say, well, this is nature, you deal with it kind of a thing? So we need a way, we need a, there has to be a number that people who need help like that and other That's, kinds of help can right. call that they know is going to be answered. So, I mean, you could always have called the fire department even on a weekend, but you'd have to know to do that. You know, that would have to be the instruction or you could but always I call the police I, on a weekend. That's right. The fire department, I mean, if you need ambulance or something, medical assistance, that's another thing. They'll find a way, I guess, to come and get you. But in a case like that, you need immediate attention to what's going on in your street or it could be flooding, or it could be tree has fallen and it needs to be removed in your street. That can happen too. So uh, I thought there should be a weekend or of business hours contact. Anybody have any idea? I sort of do. I would think that you would just call 911. I mean, that... That's the only line that's got somebody there 24 seven. And they handle other calls other than just fire and police. I mean, if I had a tree come down, I'd, I'd call 911 still. Um, you would, okay. Yeah, I mean, I know at the university, you you call the main number in an emergency, no, you know, if it's not fire, but there's somebody there all the time. Um, but I don't think the town has any other manned dispatch. And that's really what you're looking for is a dispatch center. And it would seem that 911 would be the one that you would call. That's- So I guess maybe- What I, I was- you... What, go ahead. What I was thinking of maybe another, a number for public works uh, after hours call this number in case of emergency. But you have to staff that. That has to be a staff number. You have to pay somebody to do that. So that's hiring at least two more people to cover that. So it would seem like 911 would be where you'd want to call. So, uh, so in other words, what you're saying that on weekends, forget about it. I mean, 911. No, will call 911. They can get, they can get, I'm sure that there are emergency 
numbers for different people at DPW. But to have a general number that people call, you'd have to have that staffed. That's the problem. You'd have to have somebody there all the time. So nine one, the dispatch at 911 is the one that would then make the calls, make the connections to whoever's on call. Does that make sense? Yeah, but it seems like, I think what I would be worried about was that the 911 dispatcher who answers would say, or would think this isn't the kind of emergency that I deal with. I deal well, that's training. with- That's training. That's just training. That is, that's policy that's right. and training. So there would have to be, that's right, policy and training to let them know that sometimes they're going to get calls that have to do with my PCA cannot get to me because the road needs to be plowed or yeah. because there's a tree down in front of my house or yeah. because, um, you know, or I am disabled, I cannot evacuate or I cannot go to a safe place in this tornado warning because my house, I can't get into an interior bathroom, blah, 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 I don't have one, right? Or something like that. Yeah. I mean, well, it, it sounds like what we should do is talk to the individual who is the administrator or overseer for the 911 line and get a sense of how they handle these calls now and what kind of training would be helpful and, and move on from there. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so it, I don't know who who's in charge of the nine one one dispatch. So that's you... currently Mike uh, Curtin, but I'm may I suggest that we actually uh, uh, prior to contacting him that I ask um, about the emergency management plan for the town because this answer that there may already be an answer to the question that's posed before. Okay. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, um, Myra, can I make one other yep. suggestion? Um, yep. There's also the the Cress um, uh, com uh, committee or or line that I, I I don't know if they would have resources or or have that that we could include that as as their part of their um, policies for training answer answering calls that come into Cress. What's their charge, Pamela? So um, CRESS, just so that everybody knows, is Community Responders for Equity, Safety, and Services. They're um, um, designed to be the th third branch of public safety. Um, and they were currently responding to a number of different types of calls. So wellness checks, assist uh, citizen, assist businesses. Um, they've worked with uh, seniors here in the Senior Center and, at, and Clark. Um, the goal is for them to move more into the public safety reign. So I, I mean, I, um, so I certainly think that they could be listed. At, and in a case of an emergency, they would, you know, more than likely say yes. We'll do what we can to assist. Um, but I think they too would also need, like, if in the case of a tree coming down, they would be. Uh, thank you for the call. We would be calling DPW. You know they don't have equipment. So I think I think the best place to start is to find out what the current um, emergency management uh, system mm -hmm. is in place, and then we can go from there. So I can ask Chief Nelson, um, who I believe is in charge of the em emergency management plan, about that. Okay. All right. Um, you could invite him to a meeting if he feels like he wants to tell us anything or you could just bring a report however it works better for you and him sure i uh, i um I, i've been working very closely with him for the last six months because he's part of the crest interim leadership team i just saw him this morning so i i'm, I'm happy to invite him to the next meeting okay cool Great. excellent all right good so thank you is that does that okay so that's a good beginning Sarah. Right? Yes, I think so. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, the next old business has to do with what? No, new business. That It's about the MOD grant, right? Right. That's correct. New business MOD grant. So do you know if anyone in the town 
that's the grant we did not get last year when we tried to get the one for um, for Munson Library, correct? Um, I, I do believe that's correct. Um, I don't have any additional information about the MOD grant. Um, I had, um, there were a number of questions that came up at the last meeting and I did reach out to, to uh, different colleagues in the various departments, but I did not get a response um, about um, the new grant application. So I don't, I think it was just recently released. And so I believe yes. it's, they're, they're probably just beginning to work on it. Okay. I wonder if anybody ever found out why, I mean, I don't know enough about this, but if you don't get a grant, can you find out why you didn't get it and then, or somehow, and, and then reapply for it? I mean, do they ever do that? Normally we got those grants when, right. um, you know, in the last few years. So the so, response, oh, I'm sorry. Um, go ahead. So the response that I received was that there were, um, as I'm sure is the case every year, a lot of applicants for the grant, um, but um, they did not have a more specific reason. You know, it wasn't, they weren't told like, oh, because your grant didn't include X, we, we turned it down. So I was just told that the process was very competitive. Well, it always is. But somehow we always got them. Um, we usually got them. And so this was a new person writing the grant. Um, was the, the planner, right? Yeah, I Rob. Don't know Rob who that... It's Rob Wachella, who was the new. Right. 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 Um, and I don't know if he has experience with that. Um, and I don't know if he needs any help with the next one. Um, but I want to I, I want to make sure that the town puts its best foot forward to get these things because somehow um, they are really competitive for sure, um, and you're not going to get them all. And one one grant is not an indicator of anything. But I know that that he is new, so I want to make sure that somebody is paying attention to the way that will that we write the second one, right? Whatever they want. So I I would, does anyone else have anything to say about that? I forgot what it what did we request the funds for? Say that again, please. What did we request to do with that money we were going to get from MOD? Oh, that one was to um, make the uh, the south door of Munson Library accessible. You know how right now you can't go out. Well, you can't go out because you just walk down a step onto the grass. Mm -hmm. So they were going to make that exit really for the polling place. They were gonna make it accessible to the driveway and I to the see. street. I think that's the way I recall it. But right now, if you are not walking on two feet, you can't get out that door. Right, 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 right. I totally forgot what we, uh, what it was going to be used for. So, hmm. So I would just say in, um, in Rob's defense, I mean, he is new, but his work is being supervised by, um, by Chris. So I think he probably um, has, you know, good support. And she, okay. she was present when they made the presentation about the yep. grant application. Yep. So, yeah. All right. Well, hopefully um, next month they will have some sense of what they would like to apply for. Does anyone on this committee have any suggestions as to what they should think about applying for, knowing that we're not going to be able to fix Groff Park, or I mean fix uh, Mill River Park or anything like that? I mean, it's not going to be big enough for that. Is there a downside to going for the library again? I don't know. That was what I wondered. I, I don't know. And so that's why it would be sort of cool to find out why we didn't get it. Do well, they not it, think it's important enough or did they, you know, yeah. I don't know. But it's a voting place, right? You would think yes. that they should make it accessible to all, whether yes. from the front door or side door. Well, not to add to Pamela's workload or anything like that, but but maybe she could reach out to Chris and, and see whether there was 
you know, any sense that this was just a bad project that, you know, it wasn't attractive to the state or whether it was just a matter of this, you know, the numbers and, and that wouldn't be any problem of reapplying again. Because, you know, it does seem like an important issue to folks. Just yeah. throwing it up. So I'm yeah. happy to uh, reach out to Chris. I did reach out to her to get an explanation um, about the um, their the grant, but I didn't. Um, I don't think that they knew at that time. But I can reach out to her again and ask about not only this past grant cycle, but what their intentions are for the next cycle. And I suppose we could write to Jeff Dugan, um, and we could ask him. Um, I mean, you know, do they uh, do they have this preference for stoplights and streets and stuff or, you know, like, what do they like to fund? Because we could come up with a bunch of things if we knew what they like to fund. <laughs> you know, I would just hate to resubmit it if it's just not the kind of thing that they would like to do. Although I think it is a pretty important project because it's, it's the accessibility is uh, pretty limited there. Yeah, very much. Okay, all right, so more to be continued. All right, so then in the old business, the first thing might have to do with, is it, uh, did we list? It's is the, the town thing? hall steps variance right. in, in, yeah. Okay, so last month, we talked about the steps, um, about the the fact that we never received notification that a variance had been requested to build the steps or to uh, redo the steps on the front of town hall. And we never received notification that any kind of a variance was approved. Um, we were sort of, we just didn't know. And then all of a sudden the project was sort of almost done. And then we said, wait a minute, why didn't we even know you know, Marty said they needed a variance for this, and we didn't know. I mean, the rest of us didn't realize that because we thought they think they still they already have an accessible entrance, but apparently they needed a variance anyway. And there was one applied for, and we were not told. And um, we found out from Jeff Dugan, who I wrote to, we found out the date of the variance Require uh, the date of the variance approval, which was March 27th of last year, yeah. and we found out that Chris Brestrup had the uh, that the variance was in her possession. The request was in her possession in February. Um, we never heard about it, so mm. I guess some of us weren't too happy. Um, and then. I guess there is a time limitation on when you can appeal, which has come and gone. Plus the project is almost finished and or is finished. And last month, Jim said very intelligently, well, you're not going to be able to, you know, roll back the clock, but what are we going to do from here? So we wrote to Jeff Dugan. We asked him if he would come out and give us some ideas about the accessibility of town hall. He said he probably would be willing to do that. And so I just wanted the committee to know, um, there for, for Marty and I, Matt, Marty, you can talk about this. Why don't you, look before I go further with it. Um, okay, can... I think the thing that bothers me most about this whole situation is that the affidavit at the end of the application um, I can't remember who signed it in the town, but it's an Paul affidavit. Bachelman signed it. No, he didn't. It was oh, I looked. Manners. He did. No, I think it was Ron Mora who signed it. And okay. I, I need to look it up. I was just going to look it up right now. But the last okay. page is a legal affidavit saying that they submitted it to Stavros, to our committee, and to the building inspector. Oh. And the person they submitted it to is Chris Brestrup. And she supposedly took, accepted it 
for our committee, which mm. in my feeling is a conflict of interest, number one, because she supervises the people that wrote and applied for the variance. And it never came to us. And she does not speak for us. No. Yeah, absolutely. So there's, there's a problem here. And in that statement, they in the application, they state that the entrance to town hall is accessible. So effectively, they've submitted an affidavit saying that the town hall is accessible when it isn't. And they got the variance on the fact, and I'm gonna put that in air quotes, that town hall is accessible. So I have a problem with that professionally as an architect. And we should have a problem with it as a resident of Amherst. Our well, committee. Yeah, although... well, we should have a problem with it as this committee. Because yeah. mm -hmm. Christine Grestrup at the time, Pam was already here. Didn't she? Christine Grestrup is not the head of the committee. It should have gone to Pamela. That's right. Christine knew that. Actually, the I'm letter sorry, that, that I got, the email I got about this, because the, the email I got from Jeff Dugan said it was sent to Christine Best Dressup, Brett Brestrup, who is the li liaison to the Disability Access Committee. That's what he believed. Yeah. Yeah. And if you look at the application and you didn't know the situation, you'd say, yeah. I mean, if I just looked at that application on face value and didn't know the underlying facts, I would say the same thing. I, I professionally, I just find this totally untenable. So as Jim suggested, where do we go from here? We cannot, it's too late. And do we it's want to- It's not too late. We could present to the MAAB that this was falsely, if, if we want to go that route, it was falsely granted. You can always go back and undo it. Pat, what do you say? I think that uh, what I, I raised my hand because this is an incredibly important issue and I would love to have some write up from the committee and I would be willing to take it to Paul Bachman, um to present. It's not something I would want to present in a council meeting, but yeah. I would so that he's aware of what happens and I would also appeal it. If, you Did know. you see the letter Pat, that I wrote that Marty has seen? That has all this information in it about who signed it? what and when and yeah. Okay, no, I did, did not. I apologize. I have not. Oh, maybe you didn't. Maybe you're not on the mailing list. I probably okay. am. I've been a little overwhelmed. But can you resend that to me? Yeah. Now, uh, the original ending that I had on it was essentially we're going to appeal I'm just it was a letter to let the town know we're going to appeal and then when I got the thing from Jeff Dugan that said it was too late to appeal I I just thought it was important for us to let the town know and to let the MAAB know that uh that they had approved it under false pretenses I think you're right on about that so which should we do? And I will ch change the end of the letter if you want to. I mean, did anyone read the letter I wrote? No. It's one of the attachments. The committee has to decide what you want to do. And if there's something right. I should follow through on, I will. Right. If if I could step back, you know, like one or, or two feet or something like that, which right. I don't like to do. But in this case, I mean, you know, that. That accessible entrance hasn't been accessible from day one. 
And, but this goes back a long time. I mean, the town has its ADA compliance plans. The, you know, these have been passed on and approved and all these other things. I think it would be very, very difficult to have any kind of successful appeal to, to the AAB um, simply because we've let this, it, I know somebody has let the issue lie fallow for a long, long time. I do think we absolutely need to tackle that. Um, if, if Jeff Dugan can't come out, then I don't know, we dig into our pockets or something and get, you know, a, a local specialist, somebody from the AAB or somebody like Liv Wyatt from Coon Riddle to, to go through and, you know, really say, you know, this doesn't work, this doesn't work and, and get that down on paper. The other thing, though, is that, that this is a, a terrible situation. Chris should not have done this and needs to be held to account for that. I don't think it's going to change, you know, a year from now, we're not going to have an accessible entrance just because we did that. We need to take more steps. But she, Chris definitely needs to be held to account. That's my take. I, I want to say one more thing. You know, the, the resolution from the um, a M A A B is to put a sign that says the accessible entrance is on the side. Right. You were going to be sending people to a dangerous situation. You can't even get to there from those steps. I mean, the whole thing's silly. And it's all based on a false premise. Yeah, but so, at the same time, you you can't take your wheelchair down that alley <laughs> once you park behind. I know that's what I'm saying. The whole with, thing without, is, you know what I mean? It's it's dangerous all the way around, and it yeah. always has been. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So the fact uh, I like your lay fallow. Um, line Jim um, because that's true and it's been going on for a long time that this committee in various iterations just let it be so how could it be now well it is now because to tell you the truth I never really realized how inaccessible the entrance was um, I don't use a wheelchair and I didn't know the law and I didn't know about you know whether what you have to do about topography of sidewalks, but Marty knows, and that's why it came, uh, it, it, for, for me anyway, that's why it came front and center, because there was information that I really didn't know. Obviously, Sarah knew it. Obviously, Jim yeah. knew it. Obviously, Cody knew it, but the rest of us might not have known it in, in, a, in a very direct way. So, uh, so the question is, where do you want to go from here with this? Tell Paul Bockelman, what happened for sure. Write a letter that sets the 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 you know the situation out. I already did that. Um, I can tweak it, make sure that it's clear. But what should be our next step? Jeff Dugan will come. We just have to arrange that. But what what you know um, should we appeal beyond the time that we are supposed to be able to appeal? I mean, what what should we do? Pat, Pat and I met with Paul Barkelman and Christine Brestrup. I don't know, how long ago was that, Pat? I know you're eating your lunch. Um, I'm sorry. That's I okay. don't remember. It I was back, I want to say, last really? spring? It could have been yes, probably. So almost. It was last years. spring, and the only re the reason we met was to talk about how inaccessible it was, and the reason that occurred was because Saren said she couldn't get use that entrance. So I went and took my level and measured all of the all of the uh, surfaces to get into that entrance, and then I drew it up and gave them a copy to show them why it wasn't accessible. And Pat and I presented it and Paul Brockman said, oh yeah, we know it's not accessible. <laughs> so am I presenting that right, Pat? I think so. 
So he probably was a little bit uh, more, um, didn't say it outright, but yes. Yeah, he inferred that they knew it. Right. I and that it wasn't going to get fixed anytime soon. There was no budget for it. Yeah, yeah, that's always the excuse. Do yeah. you have any way to find out when that meeting was? Because um, the variance was applied for in March, um, saying that this there was an accessible the entry. Variance. Because we actually did talk about the front steps. So it it must have been before. Um, must have been before those steps were. Do either of you have a calendar that might have it written in it? Um, I'm looking right now. I'd have to go find my last year's calendar, which I, you know, on paper that I still, I think I still have, but I can check. But I will have to disappear for a minute. I'll be back. Uh, the other person who might know, I can do it. Angela Mills would know too, right? Uh, it, yeah, if they keep records that far back, I, you know, I don't know more. I would think that they would have to. Um. Did you find it, Marty? I'll go um, you know, I think the what the real purpose of that meeting was the North Common ADA issues parking, and that yes. was Thursday, February sixteenth. Wow. Oh. And then there was a meeting that I had with Paul, which was around the same time. Maybe that. No, you went. You went. You walked around with those folks, right? You went outside and walked. The purpose was for parking, and yes. that. So that February sixteenth was, I believe, maybe the meeting that we had in Paul's office with you and me, um, to talk about the accessible streetlight. It was right. Um, let me look and see if there's another meeting. But I know you went out on a walk with them. Actually, we didn't actually go out. Oh, I thought, okay. That's the only town hall meeting I have. Okay. Okay, well, so somehow we have to find out when that meeting was, whether it was in uh, before or after the the application filing or the approval, it was right around then. And if it was after the approval, um, if they knew it was, I, I don't know, it, it just doesn't feel good. And I don't know what to do about it. Um, because if they knew it was inaccessible, they didn't do anything about it then. There is no money to fix that entrance. That I understand. But let's be honest about it. Let's be honest about it. And they need a plan to make an accessible entrance. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And also, um, there is the communication problem, too. You know, yeah. how could Chris uh, take that uh, variance and be the person in between uh, representing DAAC, we had no. I, uh, I mean, that's a big object. object I don't know that she objection. did do that. I, I, we don't know that she represented that she represented oh, too many representatives. But she got that. She got the response in the name of DAAC. No, no. She got. Yes, yeah, she did on the affidavit. It's sent yeah. to her. That's part of the affidavit. It's sent to DAAC. I don't know. It was sent to Chris as the liaison to the yeah. DAAC. That's so, what Jeff Dugan thought. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. when they when they requested that, they must have said something that the DAAC approves this. Did they say that? No, the, the process is the process no. is that the parties that are required by law to receive a copy of the variance. So it's that by law, the variance has to be submitted to Stavros, the DAAC, 
and the building inspector. And on the affidavit, you have to say how and when that was delivered. And so it was, quote unquote, delivered to Christine Brestrup as liaison to the DAAC. But Christine never presented it to the DAAC. Right. So once, that when... is, once that is delivered, you have 10 days, 10 physical days, not two weeks, but 10 physical days to respond to the MAAB if you do not approve it. That's why we have, every once in a while, we have these special meetings because yep. we have very limited time to respond to the issues. And I so we've never when... given that chance. Yeah, when uh, my question is when they requested that variance, the town requested that variance, uh, you know, when other agencies request a variance, they always bring it up to our committee and mm -hmm. we look at it and we say, oh, we support that. I think it's a good idea. Or we say, no, it's not really good. What can we do, you know? And we come up with ideas. You know, we do it with Amherst College, with UMass, and I remember doing with many things. But town, were we made aware of this challenge they were having and they were going to request variance? They never did. I know, and they're no. required by law. That's the thing. And they have Pamela, Pamela, did Christine ever talk to you about this? No, I don't recall her bringing this to my attention. I, you know, I'm, I've, I think I've been fairly good about when there's been um, a variance request, getting it out to the committee and trying to schedule a time yeah. for you all to meet. Yeah. But yeah. I don't recall this one coming before me. Yeah. Okay. So and you should have gotten a copy of it. Yeah, that's required, I, but that's the affidavit is that you were given a copy to these different agencies. Okay, so other than informing Paul Bachelman, as Pat suggests, what should our next steps be? Well, I think number one is we need to also include Accessible information about the process that they did not follow. I think I would okay. attack this through the process because we okay. know it's not gonna get fixed today, but I think the process is the issue at this point. Well, it's one of them. Yeah, it's yeah. one of them. There's a process and issue and then there's an ultimate product issue, which we want them to address. Right. Um, and well, the first... if we go forwards to the MAAB with this, the MAAB can turn around and say, Town of Amherst, you have one year to fix this. If you go to the Department of Justice, the DOJ, through the ADA, they can do the same thing. I mean, these are pretty drastic moves, but that is one of the results. The town can be forced to do this. Okay, so the question then, I think maybe is, do we want to be nice and follow on a, a path where Pat takes this to Paul Bachelman and the town council and say, this is what happened and we're very upset and this really needs to be fixed and see what the town's response is and then pursue an AAB slash DOG, DOJ complaint? Or do we jump the town process and just say, oh, I was sick of this stuff and we just go to AAB and DOJ? Or there's a third, pro third one, which is, get Jeff Dugan in here to do some kind of analysis from his perspective as the accessibility specialist from MOD um, that uh, he, for him to come up with some kind of a suggestion for what the town might do. Or can they be done simultaneously? I like the idea of Jeff Dugan coming in and 
if we can tell him how the process was circumvented, he may be a good um, sort of the bad cop. Yeah. Well, I, I, I kind of want to uh, choose the option of being nice to town, but then tell them the reasons. I mean, we can uh, request Jeff Duven to come and evaluate it. And also another thing I'd like to include that why we're pushing for it because the accessible entrance is really not accessible. So we should say why we're not really doing it just to, uh, to have another accessible entrance, but the present one is a life danger. You know, when you park in the back parking place and you're trying to get to the accessible entrance, you, you every time I have to do that, uh, luckily I don't do it on my own because I'm scared to do it. And then I wish that there is nobody coming and running over you because it's a short way and they just rush into that place, you know, coming from Main uh -huh. Street. And it's a risk. So if there were no traffic there, you could physically do it? If I have a find a place at the back of the building, yeah. and if I can park, and if there is a clear path for me that I can go through without the risk of running over, I can do it. Okay. And the it, it's not a actually, good surface. Yeah, it's, it's not... not the, yeah, it's not very good. There are many things, but uh, technically the slope and everything is better than going from up in front of the town or going down the steep hill where with a manual chair, you can slide and anything can happen. You know, it's very steep. So you have to have somebody behind you. And then, but other way from the parking lot at the back, and if they maybe uh, put some, uh, safeguards like railing or something and it will make it a smooth path for people in a wheelchair rather than take their chances. Like that thing next to the CVS lot entrance. CVS lot entrance. You know there's like they oh, made a oh, sidewalk oh, oh, oh. there. That yeah. used to just be a street the same thing and they made they took some of it and made that sidewalk with a little railing Yeah, to keep the cars is that the kind of, is that what you're thinking about? Something like that? That's what it just comes to my mind. But I mean, I have to, I can't visualize because that uh, road is pretty narrow. I think it's only one way traffic. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's But right. you know, like at the back of that building, they have that charging station there. And it takes space and you see cards, which is wonderful, wonderful. Not that I don't support it, but in a very tight space there, why does it have to be there? When we, many of us with disabilities are face struggling to get into the town hall. So in a way they kind of make it difficult. So it discourages, that's how I am personally, if I get, it's too difficult a hassle and I say well I'll try to find some some other way to do it or something you know but okay Jim Jim what's your experience with that is, is she saying things that pertain to you or is your experience different it's dangerous uh, sometimes the surface is not smooth yeah um, you do have to worry about cars coming in no question about that uh, you hope that they're not going too fast, but there's no guarantee of that. Sometimes, same situation that you get with accessible parking places, somebody will literally park in that place, you know, just for a minute while they're getting, um, who knows, where they're getting takeout or something like that. I mean, it's it's sort of designed to be obstructive to persons with in wheelchairs and anybody with a mobility impairment. Then your other option, though, would be, you know, you go out, the other entrance uh, or the other, you, you go out the exit from that parking lot and you end up on whatever the hell it is. Uh, 
So and then you go in front of town hall and then you're going down the slope, uh, which has which is dangerous too. I, it just doesn't make any sense from a practical point of view. It fails just about every test. Yeah, none of the slopes are compliant. That's, yeah, that's way, at one point at, at one, one point, point it's eleven percent. So maybe when we bring this up in our uh, communication with the town regarding the front entrance, we can say because the side, the accessible entrance is really has this problem, we can just state a few of these. You know, the slope going from the, the top of the street down, the slope is too steep, coming from the parking lot is very, um, unsafe and the surface is not clear and things like that. And for that reason, we are urging that the front entrance should be also the front entrance for those people, those of us with mobility impairment. Okay. All right. I mean, so we, I feel like putting, being forced to sit in the back of the bus. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yes. So I will rewrite what I wrote. Um, I will contact Jeff Dugan and ask him if he can come out to do a an analysis of the site and um, any and you know I will inform everybody as to what time, what date and time. Yes. And perhaps it would be good if some people, especially people who use chairs yes. would be there when he comes. Yes. Um, and obviously, you know, he's going to set the schedule, so it might not work too well for other people. I don't know. But um, are those two things that we could do? So inform the town about the process problem and send that letter to Jeff Dugan as well and invite him to come out and do an analysis of what where we might go from here. Yes. Is that, that good? Sounds like a plan. Okay. And I'll try right. to be there. You'll try to what? I'll try to be there. Oh, perfect. Okay. Perfect. All right. So the next thing we have is I think Pamela said she had not heard from anybody about the parking, the accessible pedestrian signals, or any of the other things you said, right, earlier? So um, the next thing is on becoming a commission, and I do oh, have right. some updates on oh, that. Okay. And then I did reach out to folks on the other things. So okay. Um, so let me start with uh, becoming a commission. Becoming a commission. Thank you. So um, the town manager, um, uh, Athena O'Keefe, who is the clerk of the council and Jen LaFountain, who is the treasurer, collector, and I met to discuss the process to move the, um, to, to move the committee to a commission. Um, and I have a lot of good news. I think that everyone is in, oh. uh, in favor of uh, moving the process forward. There were some steps that need to be completed um, in advance. And um, so there are things that I'm hoping um, uh, Myra and you, Marty, might be able to, to help me with. So one of the things that I've been asked to do is to review the statute and do an analysis about the current composition of the um, committee and compare that to what's required for the commission because there are some statutory requirements. Um, you have some openings, so there's a possibility that we might need to, you know, to ensure that we have specific people meet the meet those requirements. Um, the second thing that I have been asked to do, and I've been given um, an April 8th target um, deadline, is to think about what your revised charge would look like, what your new charge would look like for the commission. Um, I'm I'm not certain that that requires a lot of edits, but I'll have to review the statute to, to do that. Um, and then the uh, at that meeting, there was discussion about um, how the funding would come into the newly established commission. 
Um, there's a hope that the commission would be in place by July 1 of 2024, so trying to move oh. pretty rapidly. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. And um, the council needs to adopt the general bylaws. You know, I think all of this is information that Jeff Dugan reviewed with the um, with the committee of over a year ago now. Um, yep. And then they would need to set a time limit for the budget process so that, um, you know, and I think that I don't, my th thoughts is that if things are in place by July 1, that would be the start date for um, the approach for funds to go into the newly created account for the commission. Um, so they're taking that into account. These, they're taking, into account the changes that would occur for the next fiscal year so that you would wow. be in line with the current fiscal year. So a lot of movement on that. Um, I will be honest, I have not looked at the statute, um, but I will definitely um, try to make sure that um, I may reach out to you guys to meet separately um, to just have a conversation so that it could be presented um, probably to the committee at your at your April meeting. April 9th is the meeting. Yeah. So So the statute has two pieces. One is section 8J which establishes the commission and one is 22G um, which gives us the handicap parking fund. The 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 budgetary piece is up to the town. I mean are are you saying that they're considering giving us the money? Yes, they are. And you should, we should get it while the getting is good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's not part of the requirement. Um, right. The, so the, I mean, so, you know, you have, they have to, the council has to sign on to 22G to give us what limited handicap parking receipts there are, because the town does not seem to enforce that very much, whereas other towns do. But Amherst doesn't seem to enforce that very much. Um, and we can, you know, we're in, if we have an account, we're permitted, for example, to accept donations right. um, into the account, which the town doesn't have to give us. I mean, it could be somebody who left money for a specific project, you know, and we could try to get more money. Like it could, we're allowed to get money from various sources. We're allowed right. to accept donations. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so that, anyway, so that wow. Was, yeah, That's all, amazing, Pamela. Thank you well, so much. Well, I, I can't yeah. take credit for it, but it is um, very good news, and so things are moving yeah. um, quickly on that on that front. So, do we, do you think our objection to the entrance of the town hall <laughs> <laughs> would jeopardize this? Um, I I I don't think so. I mean, I think that it's two separate issues, right? So, um, yeah, I I think you guys can move move ahead with with your comments about that. So, so that's the, the could wait that till was, after April. Yeah. <laughs> Good question, Sarah. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. So, the, so in the interest of time, um, this well, is do, fabulous. Pamela, do you want to meet with Marty and me or anyone else who knows anything about this? Sure. Which, I would love I to would, do that. Okay. I mean, yeah. thank God you're an attorney. But there, as far <laughs> as I know, there's only two parts. There's right. just those two pieces of the statute, and they're not long. Then the, the charge is actually sitting right there. So we'd probably just have to amend whatever charge the DAAC has. Has anyone ever seen that charge? Anyway, and I, I don't know. Yeah. So, so that's good <laughs> news, and I think it, it's <laughs> yeah. moving um, right along. I did ask questions um, about um, to uh, Guilford on the pedestrian signals parking and the town common, the questions that you presented and okay. to me. And so he did email me back with some responses. Oh, okay. So the inventory of the intersections is complete. Um, the list of upgrades uh, uh, costs more than the remaining funds. Um, and he does say that there is an additional $100,000 in the capital plan for more updates in FY 2025. Fabulous. Okay. So for that, so that's pedestrian um, signals. Um, as far as the town uh, common is uh, concerned, they'll continue that construction in April. Um, and then um, uh, finally, as to the parking spaces on Boltwood, 
um, they should be back um, in line by June 1st. At, at least that's his hope that those things will be, will occur by then. Okay. And what about the one on um, South Pleasant Street? Uh, I don't think he responded to me about the one on South Pleasant Street. And I may, I, I'm looking at my, my email from him. I don't think I asked about that directly. So okay. I can ask okay. that again. Okay. All right. So that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. Boy, you did, you did really, you did Clark's better than me. Okay. All right. Say that he, again, please. I'm not sure who that was. Who was yeah, I couldn't tell. It wasn't me. <laughs> it was me. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, no, nope, that's all right. The next thing on the list. Um, oh, well, you know what? I think I see a typo in my agenda. Um, but I think the next thing on the list was supposed to be reaching out to to uh, to Chris to ask about the um, accessible trails project. And uh -huh. uh, um, she wrote back that the planning board had um, approved the project overall with some changes to the parking lot. Um, uh, and they're still um, finalizing their, you know, complete plans. The project has been put out to bid. Oh, actually, let's see. Um, she, she has not been able to send me their minutes of their last planning board meeting, which was from January. I think they were still working on it. Um, she says the project has been put out to bid and construction is expected to begin soon. The trails are expected to be ready by the end of the summer. So that was wow. her up update on the accessible trails. Thank you. Yeah. So you did say one thing that made me a little worried, which is that the planning board decided to change the parking lot. Anybody else worried about that? <laughs> um, because um, do they need to come to us or do they need to have somebody really determine whether or not they're creating accessible parking spaces? Because that is not a flat place. I, mean, right? I think that's a good point and it's something that we should ask to be consulted upon or with or in or something. I mean, the again, the other issue, though, was how are we going to get people there who don't drive? Yeah. And so that needs to be addressed, too, because otherwise we're just, you know, it's another nice thing <laughs> that right. many people with disabilities can't participate or have access to. Yep. But even if you were going to take a PD PBTA van, you want to know that it's going to be able to let you out in a place that's safe for you to get out. I, I don't know. It's not flat. I mean, that's the problem with the place, right? Oh, the, other than the fact that oh, there's it, no bug. It, it, it's fairly flat. It is. I mean, it, you know, it used to be a function place. I mean, Hickory Ridge Golf Club had dinners and stuff there all the time. So it's not too bad in that regard. But if the PVTA van is going to let you off, you want to make sure that it actually picks you up. That's um, right. so <laughs> there are some issues here. <laughs> And and I think I think we had determined that the the closest PBTA stop was like five hundred meters away or or so from the entrance. Um, I, I yeah, can't remember. Yeah, I, the, the I can't remember where it is. Probably is it on up? Route Nine. I mean, one sixteen. Yeah, it's up one sixteen. Uh, yeah, so it's quite a hike there. Right. Okay. So you, we were going to talk transit. to the. Well, the paratransit will get you there and they'll pick you up if you want to wait all day. But the, yeah, right. uh, <laughs> but the, uh, the, the, we were going to talk to the senior center or, right? What I think yeah. we should invite the seniors, uh, somebody from whoever determines what that van does that the senior oh, center this... got. Who's in charge of that? Is it a council of aging decision? I or is think it a... so. I think so. so. Um... The senior center director is Haley Bolton, and yeah. um, she works with the Council on Aging. I could um, uh, in, extend an invitation um, and ask her to join your next meeting if you would like. I think that's great because we need to make sure <clears throat> that once that place is open, that people can get there because there's no bus. 
Yeah. Right. Okay. So we want to put that in their thinking. And and we had, we didn't include in that in in the letter to um uh, uh the the committee about both the um the, the lack of the uh, a bus stop, but also trying to get trying to coordinate with the senior center. Is it and is it the silver um the silver van? Uh, yeah, the, I, I, I think it's they refer to it as the silver shuttle, but I'm I'm shuttle. yeah I'm not. No, that letter. The, that letter that we wrote, where did it go? It went to who asked for their approval for our, it was the conservation, who, oh my it was, God. It was addressed, yeah. addressed to um, Dave, Dave Zlomek. Dave Zlomek, okay, right, mm. okay, mm. that's right. It, it went to Dave Zlomek, who's in charge of everybody. So <laughs> one would hope that he has spoken to Haley Bolton about this. You know, maybe what we might suggest that um, maybe it maybe twice a week or once a week at least they should reserve a slot for people with mobility impairments who might need to use the van to be served. You know, like I mean, you of course you cannot tell what kind of date is going to be like. But if people know, rather than take their chances and they turned away, you know, then that will discourage them. Well, we were thinking maybe that there would be a scheduled ride, you know, like on Tuesdays and Thursdays, yeah. at whatever time the van is going to take people to the new conservation area That's or right. whatever recreation area. And at such and such a time, the van is going to pick people up. That's right. That would be great. And it will, you know, like requests for that uh, service should get, get a higher priority and how they can accommodate. Okay. So we're going to see her. her hopefully... that needs to... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I think that needs to be the, the top of the agenda for the discussion with Amy Bolden. Uh, yes. I think it's a great idea. I, I need to throw cold water if any is needed on the idea that people can go from the bus stop on 116 to the Hickory Ridge uh, area, because unless you're trying to re reduce the number of persons with disabilities in Amherst, you really don't want them going down that road in a wheelchair or something like yeah. that. It, it is not safe. <laughs> <laughs> I totally well, I, agree. I was thinking increase the number. It could be done. You could think about it both ways. <laughs> you think about it. Yes, you could reduce and increase by. Uh, <laughs> that's good. All right. This is good. All right. So we're going to have Haley Bolton at the next meeting and hopefully the fire chief, right? So he can tell us what procedures would be used in an emergency. And so that we can make sure that it's all on the website under the disability part. Um, and then we all, we have to talk about the website at some point, um, what we're gonna be able to, what we wanna put there. That's a whole other discussion. Um, and probably not until we're a commission, right. but we'll need to change the website. I know zip about changing websites, but we probably want to talk about what we want to see on the website, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we need minutes. It is 12.53. We have two sets of minutes, one from the special meeting with Amherst College. Um, are there any comments about that, or is there a motion to accept? So. Um, sorry, Myra, Myra was, the, was there also the bit about connecting with Northampton? Northampton. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you do that? Uh, I, yeah, I did finally do that. Sorry. It took so long, okay. and I heard back from Keith, um, and they they are eager to connect with us further. Um, they haven't, uh, well, they have a March meeting that's today at four, um, but they have an April meeting, a May meeting, and a June meeting, and they were wondering about connecting at some point. Um, but uh, just want to let folks know that I had made the connection, and if we want to. Um, I don't know, plan something further for, I don't know, either later in the, in the summer or during Disability Pride Month um, or or just a, uh, forging a across the river uh, connection uh, with, with their committee. Um, 
I guess I'd want there to be a purpose for it other than just hello, how are you? Yeah. Who yeah. are you? Um, I, I guess I'd want to know if there would be something we could maybe bring that we want to talk about. I don't know. By the way, speaking of which, do you know that the PVTA, for what it's worth, um, the PVTA um, paratransit is running same day service in Amherst. That means you can you have to order it two hours in advance if it's available. But if they happen to have free, free time, you can call up and say, could you get me to such and such a place? And you know, if it's two hours away, um, but then try to get back and they'll tell you they can't. So I don't really know how helpful that's going to be because you, you know, if you reserved it one way the other day and you want to change the pickup time and they won't do that, then you could try the same day. But I just thought you should know that on paper, they have same day service in Amherst. Yeah. Um, anyway, so the, and Northampton has that too. That's what made me think about it, mm. but Hadley doesn't. Um, so um, I think it, at a future meeting, next meeting, maybe we need to think about what we might want to talk about with Northampton or do with Northampton. But I think right now isn't the time because we don't have time. What that do people sense. think? Yes? Yes. Okay. So <laughs> minutes I, I, of I agree January. that there isn't time, uh, but I, I would say that if Northampton has had this same day service longer, that, it, yes, that would have. be one of the things that would be good to talk about with that committee in terms of is this a viable thing or just another joke? So, <laughs> good <laughs> question. That is a good one to discuss. Yes, they have had it longer. Ours is relatively new. I'm not even sure when it started. Um, and Northampton's probably been going for about a year. All right, minutes of January 24th, was that? The special meeting about the Amherst College construction project. Is there a motion to accept them or approve them? Don't all answer I saw one. Okay, thanks, Jim. Anybody second? I second. Okay, did anybody read them? <laughs> I, actually, I actually did. Um, <laughs> they they seem right. They seem right to me. Um, uh, so, I mean, do we are, are we ready to vote? Are people willing to vote on something they didn't read? Or you want to just read them? Why right are now? you asking such questions, Myra? <laughs> <laughs> Why do I you don't go like into such detail? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we have a motion and a second. We're voting. Um, all in favor of approving the minutes from, from that January special meeting. Say yes. Aye. Bye. Yes. Aye. Thank Aye. you, Cody. All right, so that's everybody, I think. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Um, Myra, this is Ian. I'll abstain because I wasn't able to make the special meeting. Okay. All right. And the next minute is from February. Uh, any? Do we have a motion about them? To approve them? Motion to approve. Okay. And do we have a second? I second. Yay. We have any discussion, corrections, anything like that about those minutes? No. Okay. All in favor of approving the February meeting minutes from February 13, say yes. yes. Aye. Aye. Okay. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay, we have two sets of minutes. Okay, Pamela, did you ever figure out what happened to the other minutes? And did you ever receive any, not that I sent you any, but did you ever receive any <laughs> of the old minutes? I did not receive any of the old minutes. I have a theory that I'll have to check with IT. Um, the town has two different methods for storing documents. Um, and I'm wondering whether the other documents might be in the other system, I, but I haven't checked yet. So okay, I, I found some of them. 
but I wasn't going to send them because I didn't know if anyone else had sent them. So I'll dig them out and I'll okay. send you what I can find. What are the dates you want? So it's actually, it's all of uh, 2021 um, um, to 2022. They're just like a full year missing. Um, wow. So the year 2021 ending sometime in 2022 or right before you came or? Yeah, right before I came. That So they're so all like 18 the, months worth. Yes. But I'm, well, I will, I'll send out the dates and I will try to check with, I, with IT. Marty has her hand up. Yeah. Okay, Marty. I just want to say this has been, having the minutes on the website has been a longstanding problem for this committee. Um, I know when I was in practice, I could never get copies of the minutes, which was really disturbing because I always watched them to find out what the what is the feeling of the board before I did variances. And there is a lot of missing records. So okay. I have a, I have a feeling that that the because there is a whole year missing that some of it might be technical issues because there are two different methodologies for for reserving documents or archiving documents which i find really frustrating because i can never remember which directions i'm supposed to go but i will work with it again mike warner has been really good um, and ask him if we can do some inquiry but if you have old minutes please do send them to me okay so um yeah what i have is like a packet mm -hmm. and so you would have to extract the minutes because otherwise I'll have to save them in a certain place and attach them and everything. So that's not how I do my. Right. And, you know, my... it, it, it may be that Maureen save things as a packet rather than saving them individually. Because if you look at the various boards and committees and towns uh, in town, different um, boards and committees have different practices. Some save their minutes um, separately. Some save them as packet packets and some boards have all three different documents. That's why I, I have a feeling that they're there, but we probably need to try to do a little bit more digging. Well, this is all that, but Pat, are you still there? Maybe not. Is Pat still there? She is. She is. Yep. She is. Well, <laughs> see, here's all of this. And this mm -hmm. is maybe something that the town council should take up because it, it it pertains in some ways to the records of the open meeting law. Mm -hmm. So it would seem to me like they should have a better system. Okay, I right? Will, yeah, between Pamela and I, we will try to figure out even what the system is. <laughs> <laughs> or systems are. Right. Systems are. Okay. All right, I think we need a motion to adjourn. Um, and is anyone gonna make one? So moved. Any second? I'll second. Great, okay, Cody second. And does who all in favor of adjourning say yes? Aye. 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 Opposed? And I assume no one's going to abstain. Okay, so <laughs> I guess I guess we're all done until April nine, nine. Um, okay. which is the day after. Uh, Pamela, oh, so Pamela and Marty and I should set up a meeting to talk about the commission charge, right? Yes. The, so everybody can go if you want. Um, and Pamela and Marty and I should set this up. Bye, everyone. Okay. Bye, bye everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye, bye. Thank you, Marty. Next bye. month. Okay. All right. So I'm relatively free. I'm sorry to say I have nothing okay. to do. All right. Hold on one second. Pamela has no time. So she's the one who has to decide who do this. All right. So, uh, oh, wait. Did on. we? Hold Stop on one recording. second.
Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. So hold on one second and okay. I will stop the recording. Okay. All right.